All right, for segment one today, we're going to continue on with absolute power. And in this first video, we are going to talk about uh, what is it called? Not base stats. The stat, yeah, the stats. <laughs> the terms in this game drive me nuts sometimes. Uh, the stats, which is body, mind, and soul. The three core attributes. Oops, can't say that for this game. The three core stats that define your character and uh, everything it's going to be able to. And then follow, we'll follow that up with, uh, yep, derived stats. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm going to get the terms of this game down at some point. But it's the, der the derived values that come from those stats that uh, flesh out your character. And then the second video, the one after this one, we're actually going to talk about attributes, which are the skills, talents, uh, traits, abilities, and so forth that your character has. So first things first here, let's get into... Get that up Boop. Uh, here. I'll share the book as Heathen Dog tells how you should like, subscribe, share, and donate to us. Oh, everyone should like, subscribe, and share. I mean, that's just easy, right? But donations? Oh, oh, that's that's the good stuff. You can donate from PayPal right here. Maybe some Ko-Fi. Maybe Ko that. A good or one. thank you. Yeah. Or you know, Streamlabs works too. Now, if you want to donate through YouTube or Twitch, stuff like that, just remember that 30 to 50% of your money is just going to disappear into the pockets of, of people who, you know, censor speech all the time. So, you know, do with that as you will, but that's the way it is. All right. There's a cover for absolute power. What's he holding? Is that a truck van? It looked like part of a truck, a, a broken yeah. truck of some kind or a van it's or something. Yeah. And we want a chapter four, I think it is. Yep, stats and derived values. That's what it's called. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, the, a little thing about stats and and derived stats. The, this is not a new thing. I mean, no. uh, it's completely understandable, and it actually has a function. Think about this. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have statistics, and this is a tri stat system, so there's three statistics, right? It, that makes sense. In but, a nice Venn diagram. Exactly. Right. But. You really can't make a proper, fully fledged role playing game with just three statistics. I'm sorry, you can't. You can't do it. That's where derived statistics come in. Not only does does you know do, does it cheat you into, into saying it only has three stats, but it also stops people from min maxing to the point of ridiculousness. If uh, you have three main core statistics and say three derived statistics from two or more of the main stats. That means you can't just pump one and dump stat the rest of them and not have any consequences whatsoever. No, if uh, there's what a uh, body, mind, and soul is that the are those are the stats? Yes, body, mind, and soul. Yes, yeah, body, mind, and soul. And the derived ones one could be body, mind, average together. Another we're we're, we're going to get into soul. that. You don't have to guess. Average, you know, it, it could do all that. So it, it it actually stops players from 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 min maxing to the point where they're ridiculously overpowered in this one thing, but then they don't care about anything else. Well, you're going to have to care because your derived statistics also you know factor into your day to day life and 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 heroing and whatnot. So you're going to have to care, which means you got to be more balanced. Forces characters to make their their character more balanced. You're for That's sure going to need to focus on two of them. Three, that depends on how well-rounded you want to be, but for sure two. You cannot get by with just one and be the epitome of what you want to be. No. no. So, all right. Stats and derived values. Well, we're going to start with stats. Stats, short for statistics, are numerical assignments that reflect your character's basic capabilities, with higher stat values indicating an advanced level of accomplishment or achievement. More than any other values in absolute power, stats are a measure of your character's core competencies and provide the foundation upon which everything else is built. Dice rolls are compared to your stats, and you want your character to perform challenging tasks to help determine if the attempt was successful or not. Absolute power is part of the tri-stat system family of RPGs that uses three stats to represent your character's abilities, body, mind, and soul. You may use some or all of your remaining character points when assigning stat values to your character, then add these values to any that were included in the assigned power or origin template. All right, so let's start with the first one, body stat. I think you guys should be able to figure this out. This is going to be your strength and endurance, but let's, uh, uh, and dexterity, I guess. Uh, body stat measures the physical aspects of your character. This includes overall health, strength, endurance, 
quickness, rate of healing, manual dexterity, and ability to withstand damage and trauma. Now, before you're like, whoa, 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 strong people usually lose dexterity and, and dexterous people are usually lithe and, you know, whatever. Remember, this is more of a rules light game. If you want something more simulationist, I would suggest, say, Champions, if you like these point-based things, or, or potentially GURPS, I, although I haven't played GURPS in so many years, I forget. This game is meant to give you enough stats, in this case, I keep on calling them ability scores or attributes, but uh, stats, to allow you to play the game and to have meaningful dice rolls. But ultimately, yes, if you have a high body stat, you are considered both high in dexterity and in strength. I know a lot and of people. There, there's plenty of of ways to you know hand wave that. You know, I mean, uh, is, is, is especially if your if your character is like Iron Man type hero. You know, you you don't have to be huge to be really strong. It's technologically you know assisted strength. Great. If if you're a magic based character, then you can be super skinny and still be magically strong. That's fine. You know, whatever. You you can. You can make, you know, reasons for all this and still be, you know, completely cool in the in the game. So and and we'll talk about it in I don't know what week but within the next couple of weeks we'll talk about it but uh, there you can also add limiters to your character. So if you really want look, I am muscle bound. I know that I am not Mr. Ninja. That's great. You can put a limiter in there that enhances your strength even more while yeah. reduce or your body, I should say. Yeah, well, while reducing your agility. And yeah. manual dexterity you can do that it's yep. fine now people are simple <laughs> let's be honest and be like, well why would i do that if i can just have everything in one stat sure you could but what yeah. that limiter would do is it would boost up you know i should be careful because my, my luck is that actually doesn't exist in the game but i i generally understand how the game works so you get the idea so maybe we should wait until we get to the limiters portion just to verify that that's something that can be done but the game is built around that concept of you making the character you want. All right. Character with a high body is in good physical shape and can lift approximately 20 to 30 kilograms times his body stat and freely maneuver about one and a half that amount. And freely maneuver about one and a half. Oh, okay. You can maneuver if you're carrying. It's lift and carry from palladium. Got it. So you can maneuver if you have one and a half times that amount. So 30 to 45. One half, oh, I'm sorry, one half of that, about 10 to 15. So 10 to 15 kilograms. So if you uh, take your body stat, let's say it's five times, just make it 10 to make life easier. So that's 50. If you're carrying 50 kilogram, you can uh, maneuver yourself about. But if you just want to lift it up from the ground, again, we'll use five just for simplicity's sake. You can lift 100 kilograms above your head effectively. Which is or no hold, joke. Or hold on to it, yeah. Uh, it can also sprint at top speed of four to five meters per round or four to five kilometers per hour multiplied by body stat over short distances. Body values of non-humans or superpowered humans may still center on a human average unless they're also superhumanly fit. Superhuman or subhuman strength, durability, and speed are all represented by specific attributes and defects. There it is, defects, not limiters. Defects, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. For example, an out-of-shake hulking brute might have a lower body than an athletic teenage boy, but the brute's size may be reflected by other attributes such as armor, super strength, and tough. So there you go. You still can build the character that you want. Mindstat. Mindset represents your character's mental prowess and aptitude. High values indicate intelligent and witty characters who are keen, critical thinkers, and strategists. Your character's mind value does not necessarily correlate with the breadth of training and depth of experience, though. Your character can be highly skilled in a few areas. They still have an, only have an average mind stat. Characters who primarily have strong mental defense rather than full-spectrum intellectual capabilities may have a moderate mind stat paired with the mind shield attribute levels. So it's, it's showing you examples here that you don't have to just cook up your mind stat in order to have uh, certain defenses in there. There are defenses built into the game uh, that that will that will supplement your your lack of mi uh, mind stat. On the flip side, you can have a crazy high mind stat but be very focused. You don't have to be or, Professor Xavier, or be have a huge huge amount of of mind stat but be trained in almost nothing because you never actually applied yourself. That's entirely possible, too. You can do that. I don't know why you would, but you could. 
soul stat. The soul stat represents luck, willpower, determination, and spirit, and can also represent psychic ability, empathy, and unity with nature. A high rating in the soul stat helps your character focus on personal energies or life force to go beyond normal limits to fuel special abilities. Super so Dragon is, Ball Z chi power. It, yes, it is. Yes, it yep. is. High soul values are a good way to represent the many comic heroes whose main trait is strength of character, pure heart, or innocent. And magic users. <laughs> yes. Just... And psychos. Uh, yeah. All them. Balanced abilities is that Venn diagram that we were talking about earlier and that he and Doug was explaining to folks. Stats and absolute power assume as a baseline that characters are well-rounded, balanced individuals at their core. For example, people who we would describe as athletic would have body stats that reflect their physicality across a wide range of body aspects, strength, dexterity, flexibility, toughness, etc. Similarly, characters who are pulled towards more academic pursuits would have mind stats that reflect their brain power through multiple avenues, intelligence, wits, critical thinking, perception, etc. Creating balanced, superpowered characters is simplified by only having three stats that cover the physical, mental, and spiritual as uh, aspects of your creation. Just one second here. Okay. Um, something didn't feel right about that sentence, but I think I was wrong. If one or more of your character stats are primarily the result of enhancements such as technology, magic, otherworldly influence, paranormal training, divine intervention, etc., rather than natural expressions of experience and talent, the aptitude can either be explained through the assignment of the augmented attribute or another more targeted attribute. Remember, attributes are your skills, your talents, your traits, superpowers, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they are not your core stats. <laughs> it throws me off every time. Uh, a few examples of such specialized attributes that fall outside the stat range and can refine your character's concept for excelling in one particular area include super strength. We're not going to read all these, but super strength for a strength aspect. So there you go. I want to be strong, but we only have limited number of points. And since it also includes my dexterity, I really want to show off that I'm just crazy strong. Well, then you can take the super strength attribute. Let's scroll down. Sixth sense for an intu uh, intuition aspect. Hmm. Something's not right here. Hmm. Uh, mulligan for a luck aspect. That sounds kind of cool. <laughs> See, Heathen Dog, Heathen Dog in his mage game made us all take an uh, 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 ability called common, uh, sense. common sense. Yep. Mulligan should be it. Should yeah. change it to mulligan. That's true. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> because mulligan from from what i understand of the meaning of the word i guess you can re-roll something at least once a game session or once or whatever it's that's what it sounds like we're gonna or get, get to a bonus it later, to it or something yeah 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 that that's what it sounds like and the the uh, trait common sense for for the world of, world of darkness game was if you're about to do something incredibly stupid i'm allowed to say that's incredibly stupid i still can't make you not do it but i can warn you so that's fun yeah i don't i don't remember it coming up I well, want to no, say it may no, have happened with Bob. You were incredibly but... stupid people, so you didn't make a whole lot of incredibly stupid decisions. But I think Bob was the only one, and I don't even know if that was uh, the common sense thing. I think that was just him mouthing off to a, a, an effect of God, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> All right, reading stat value. Stats range from 1 to 24. Now, it's been a long time since I looked at Bessem, and when I played the one shot, it was not characters of anywhere near that power. But I think this is higher than Bessem's. Yeah. Because I seem to remember Bessem going to like 16 or 20 or something like that. I forget. Anyway, so uh, stats range from 1 to 24. A value of 4 in a stat is the adult human average. So I want you to take a look at those numbers. You can go from 1 to 24. What is a human adult? 4. That's a... Yep. That's so, something. Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> as you were saying. Super oh, Bessem's one looks like it's one to twelve. Is it one to twelve? Okay. Yeah. Was it that low? Yeah. Uh, all right. Ranking uh, a ranking that many superpowered characters frequently surpass in some or all of their stats. Yeah, it depends on the power level you of your game. Yeah. If an average human is four. You could probably get fives in everything. I mean, I we have to look, but. It doesn't seem ratings outrageous. under four indicate decreasing competency and, and ratings over four designate increasing superiority. 
For example, a human of average build, world-class intelligence, and above average determination might have a body of four, mind of 11, and a soul of five. Well, that is, yeah, world-class. Yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> 11. That's twice as... That's almost, almost three, three times yeah. the almost, average person. Yeah. I've seen the 2.75 in my head and said twice for some reason, but whatever. Um, yeah, that's that's crazy. Under normal circumstances, characters and living beings must have a value of at least one in each stat. Well, you got to be able to function, right? Yeah, you got to be alive. I mean, yeah, you, you can have a zero in mind, but you're not role playing very well because you're in a coma uh, or your brain dead or whatever. Yeah. You're, you're Spock's brain. Uh, furthermore, GMs are encouraged to require a solid character. So wait, required? Oh, re encouraged to require. Okay, I, I read that wrong. GMs are encouraged to require a solid character concept before allowing stats values to exceed 10 in games focused on regular humans. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm with that. I'm with that. I'm, I'm just looking up at that 11 said so apparently that GM allowed that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense. If you're playing a Batman daredevil street level crime type thing, you probably don't want people with strength 24 running around, right? That would just, that, that would not be fun. For anyone, <laughs> well, it'd be fun for the player <laughs> oh, for a minute, and then crime stops in their city because, damn, he just keeps crushing skulls. I mean, <laughs> oh, I put my fist through him again. Darn it! Uh, so, stats values to see ten game folks with humans, since these represent capabilities well beyond the human norm. For superhero human characters, values exceeding fifteen may be rare. Values above 20 are reserved exclusively for godlike anime Super Saiyan beings. Or Superman. Or Superman. Well, you'd say he's godlike in terms of just yeah, power, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Superman is is a demigod. I mean, by 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 even the most stringent definition of the word, he's a demigod. Stat costs. Your starting character points are used to purchase stats. Now remember, you can use those points to purchase your templates your attributes, et cetera, et cetera. But you can also use them just once you have a template, if you have points left over, you can use them to increase your stats. Or maybe you're not using templates. Maybe you're creating everything just directly from scratch. You can do that as well. And you use your points to do that. Each stat starts with a value of zero and raising a stat by one costs two character points. So if he wants that five for that above average, that's going to cost him 10 points. So an average 444 is what? 888, so 24 points. An average character is, there you go, 24 points. Average, well, I shouldn't say average character. Average adult human is 24 Great. points out of the gate. So if your game is 25 points, <laughs> then you are, you are an average human with, with minor training in something stupid. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> minor training in uh, getting up and showing up to work on time. Yep. Uh, all right. That so, means you have to take drive. Up oh, your bone. <laughs> Not in New York City. I got public transportation. Uh, most characters should have values of at least four in each stat if you want to represent the minimum capabilities of the average human adult. You may wish to not allocate towards stats. You may wish to not allocate towards stats all your characters' points that remain after. Set. My God, that is an awkward <laughs> sentence. Yes. Okay. So you may wish to not allocate towards stats. All your characters' points that remain after signing your power, origin, and size templates. Since any points not previously spent can be used to acquire useful and evocative attributes for your character. Of course, the GM may choose to set an absolute ceiling or floor in the number of character points that can be allocated to stats to ensure characters have a balance between stats and attributes. Or they may leave this decision to your discretion. I can see it. So maybe, look, I don't care if you have 100 powers, but I don't want anybody with uh, stats higher than 10. So I'm limiting the stats to 10 or you've got heen dog. You've got 30 because since it's two, so 36 points to spend across all your stats. I don't care how you do it, but you only get 36 points. It's well within the uh, game masters uh, purview to set those limitations or not shortcoming defect as mentioned previously with only three game stats representing all physical mental and spiritual capacity absolute power is obviously ideal for well-rounded balanced characters but what if your character is weak in a particular area of a stat for example your character might be strong healthy and durable but rather clumsy oh my god it's like they read our minds what, what we were talking, talking about, about earlier yeah. similarly it could be intelligent and witty but forgetful or strong-willed and composed but unlucky 
On page 161, you will find the shortcoming defect, which was designed specifically to further divide the stats into subcategories as best fits the vision of your character. Although you do not normally select defects for your character until chapter 7, which we're in chapter, what, 4 right now? You may wish to become familiar with the shortcoming defect earlier if you need to define your character with specific precision. And I that like that a lot. I like that a lot because it's saying, hey, you don't really need to know this until later. But because we're we're building your initial character and, and you're you're getting what your character is in your head, mm -hmm. bear in mind that, you know, you can dial in that character in your head. As long as you keep these things in mind. One of the things you're going to find about the TriStat system of games, and again, anybody who's done Champions and probably GURPS is similar to this as well, understands this already. But you really can build the character you want to build. There's a way to do it somehow, some way. So if you look at the three attributes, and Heathen Dog went through this very well at the beginning, if you look at those three attributes and are like, hey, three attributes... You know, that, that's it. That's all you got. Well, guess what? You've got uh, the, the derived values that are going to affect your character. If you really want to do what we're about to talk about here, is, uh, get those defects, I doesn't make sense. I don't want my character to be a ninja or vice versa. My character is a lithe, ropey guy. I don't have any strength. But man, I can get out of any handcuffs. I'm a Houdini over here. Well, then just take the shortcoming defect. It's all yeah, no, in the game. It, and you don't just lose when when you take a defect you get points which means you get to spend your points somewhere else you either get points or you get levels and i will determine that when we get to points chapter level, seven but right. it depends but, on if their powers or not right yeah yeah, yeah. right okay. you'll get something back for it you're not yeah. just being screwed by it no all right let's take a look at uh, this little chart real quickly here uh so it's just talking about stat value and rank so of course force average adult human Okay, and then let's look at 10. Best in the country or large region? All right. And what's 15? Fantastic superhuman ability. Yep. What's 24? 24, maximum superhuman achievement. That's beyond godlike superhuman ability. Uh, yeah, I think maybe 23 and 24 description could be flipped. Well, I mean, it is literally the maximum, so. And you're yeah, already know, superhuman. But... Yeah, but if you're godlike, that seems like it goes beyond maximum superhuman because you're part because you're human. Humans can surpass gods. Pfft. Don't tell the gods that they'll, they'll get all th lightning throwy on you. All right, we're going to skip that little uh, section there. Now we're going to talk about derived or calculated derived values. Remember, do, uh, do we see it here or no? Nope. I was looking for the Venn diagram, diagram again. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I know here. it's it was in the beginning. Yeah, I, well, it's, it's also at the back. There, there's a couple places. I just don't have the exact page numbers uh, written down. All right. Once you have allocated all the characters points by acquiring stats, attributes, including skill groups and defects, plus any associated enhancements and limiters, all those things we are going to get into later in the videos uh, in the upcoming videos you should return to this section to calculate your character's derived values so why uh, do you do this why do you do this after the fact the reason you do it after the fact is because if you're to calculate them right now they would change th exactly they would change why do you need the information now because they're based on your core stats so yeah Again, I, I, I don't read uh, gaming books like they're novels, so flipping doesn't bother me as long as you tell me where I'm flipping. Looking and it's in the same book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looking at you, Palladium. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, where are we? Plus any associated enhancements, limiters, you should return. Oh, okay, we already read that. Uh, these derived numbers are based directly on your character's body, mind, and soul stats, modified by attributes and defects and thus do not afford any choice of character point distribution there's literally math you're not going to be able to do anything to affect these things without effect uh, you'll have to affect the things that create these not this themselves hopefully i'm speaking english i don't know after reading this book, sometimes it's hard. Uh, if your direct values don't reflect the vision of your character accurately, you can always return to the stats, attributes, and defects sections to refine your assignments to better match your expectations. Well, what if the expectation is I want to do this, but the Game Master didn't give me enough points for my character? Stupid well, game hey, master. you got to take more defects, that's all. 
<laughs> you have to take more defects to 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 get the thing that you want. And that, that that's that's another reason why you do this last. If at the end you're like, no, he's just not good enough at combat. He needs to hit more reliably. Well, then you go back and you get an attribute or power that that in increases your combat value. And they have they have that. The book has that. And then you spend those points or you, you, you jigger points around to be able to get a couple of points of that, come back here and re and redo the calculation. And there you go. Bob's your uncle. But talking about that, let's start with combat value. Mm -hmm. Combat value governs all facets of physical conflict, including your character's abilities in attacking, defending, and delivering damage. A higher combat value reflects fighting... Uh, ref reflects... Okay, it reflects the fighting spirit and increased knowledge of all physical combat forms, armed, unarmed, martial arts, and ranged weapons. I, this is one of those that gets people spun up. I remember this from Bessem. Like, okay, so because I can punch well, I can shoot well in a in a rules light or in a game that's more rules light. Yes. Yeah. And remember, guess what? You want to exemplify the fact that you're awesome with ranged weapons, but not good with fisty cuffs. Guess they what do you that. can do? Enhancements. <laughs> Take or limiters. just take take a defect, you know, melee combat defect. I'm sure there's one of those in here somewhere, of some sort. Yeah, of some yeah. type. There, yeah, there's definitely going to be. So, uh, and and I, I actually I like the term combat value. Now, personally, I would rather have it be melee and range. I get it. I'm not I'm not arguing with the game. I'm just saying that's the way my head cannon works, right? But with that said, I like the fact that it's combat value. It's not. Yeah. How does it, it's not so pedantic that it gets into every little nuance of it. You don't, you as the player explain it, whether it's martial arts or a boxer, or you just take it or whatever it happens to be. It's just a generic term, combat value, this, how well you fight. It seems very similar to champions or hero system. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. You have an OCV and DCV there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, there. Okay. So uh, there are two separate components of the combat value: attack combat value, ACV. <laughs> very, very similar, or ripped off. You know, whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to go with. <laughs> and defense combat value, DCV. Well, I mean, to or be fair, you you can't you can't copyright uh, common terms like that. So I get it. Uh, attributes and defects and may modify either component separately. Okay, so if you want to be great at defense, you're just the perfect defender, but not worry about your attack, you can do that. Or the other way around. Well, that's the way most people would go. That's why I changed it up. <laughs> oh, okay. Prowess in combat can be achieved through harmony of the complete self. Oh, <laughs> I know, right? Lack of self-unity through weakness of any facet of the character will restrict his ability in combat. Consequently, the body, mind, and soul stats are all of equal importance to the combat master. Body stat for a forceful attack and defense. Mind stack for quick, quick wit, knowledge of combat techniques and anticipation of opponent's actions. And soul stat for the je ne sais quoi. I mean, for the winning spirit and good fortune. Yep. Okay. Je ne sais the, quoi. the first two stats had legit reasons, but the soul one, you're reaching, bitch. And we well, can okay, tell. So, so soul is luck, and, and luck does come into play a little bit. The winning spirit, there is something to say for attitude and morale in a fight. Yeah, you, you, you know what gives you attitude and morale? Being bigger, stronger, and faster than the other guy. And then, if you're using your mind stat, being more trained as well, you don't need luck. You're just going to win. Okay, but uh, reality, unfortunately, is <laughs> that two equal opponents, people with uh, that have a more positive attitude towards a fight tend to actually win the fight. It's psychology. Sure. Uh, for example, a petite vigilante with martial arts training can take down an opponent nearly twice the size since knowledge and determination is just as important as brute force. It's actually something uh, I learned in Kung Fu. Sure you can. Sure. You're not gonna you might not do it from brute force tackle, but sliding on the sliding on the ground, kicking you in the front of your ankle and behind your knee, you're going down. I don't care how big you are. Yeah, but I don't think you're gonna okay never mind never mind carry on with suspending reality okay your character's base combat value is calculated by adding together all the stat values and dividing by three rounding down 
The attack combat value is equal to the base combat value plus one per level of the character's attack mastery attribute, which I think the character that's, that's what I was talking about earlier, yeah. where where you can go and then you can get attack or defense value bonuses by spending points. Yep. So and that would be well, it says it right there. Attributes. So that's one of the attributes. Remember, attributes we'll start talking about in the next oh, video okay. are your your skills, talents, traits, quirks, whatever you want to call it for your character. Uh maybe increase in specific circumstances determined by the enemy attack, melee attack and ranged attack attributes. So there are other attributes to worry about as well. The defense combat value is equal to the base combat value plus one per level of the character's defense mastery attribute. So there you go. If you want to be a fighter, you probably want that attack mastery attribute and that defense mastery attribute to add even more. Uh, DCV may be increased in specific circumstances as determined by the enemy defense melee defense, and ranged defense attributes. So here you go. That is not a complicated formula. Calm down. I know some people can't do subtraction when it comes to Thaco, but, uh, you know. It's, a, it's, it's an averaging. You're, you're, you're averaging. Yep. That's it. That's what it is. You're averaging it. In so Canada, you they four, four, four. Okay. Four. Your combat value is going to be four. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, man. 10, 10, 10. Combat value is going to be 10. Well, Canadian book writers require you to know basic math. Okay. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Uh, all right. So, health points are a little different. I'll even keep the formula up there for you so you can take time. Uh-oh. Apparently, I can't. Excuse okay, me. that didn't work at all. Where you, where'd oh you go? Where'd I went all over the place. I wanted to just scroll a, you know, a, a little smidgen, and it scrolled forever. There, well, there you go. That's good enough. All right. Health points measure the amount of physical damage your character's body can sustain before it ceases to function. Knocked unconscious or even dies. Damage delivered in combat is subtracted from your character's current health point total. If the total ever falls below zero, the character is rendered unconscious and may die if he doesn't receive medical attention. Notice it's not at zero. No, it's below, below zero. zero. Your character's base maximum number of health points is equal to the sum of the body stat and soul stat multiplied by five. Increase health I points. On this one. I, yeah, I, I understand this one because, you know, you're the so, sometimes people get up when they shouldn't get up and <laughs> they just don't. You should. No, dude, don't. And he just gets up anyway. You know, like the like the whole uh, Steve Rogers b before before he, he became a drug user. He got up when he shouldn't have been getting up. And that's because of his soul stat. His body did not allow him to get up. He forced him. He used willpower and forced himself up. And that could easily happen to you, too. Adrenaline. Yep. I've seen enough cop shootings where uh, people get shot three, four, five times. And you're like, okay, he's down. And then gets up like, how? 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 <laughs> <laughs> you should be bleeding through all the holes. What is going on here? Uh your character's base maximum number of health points is equal to some of the body stat and soul stat multiplied by five. Increase health points by plus 10 for every level of the character's tough attribute. So now we've got attack mastery, defense mastery, and the tough attribute. Reduce health points by 10 for every mi minus one. Hmm. Every, I would say just every rank of the fragile defect. I don't think that should be a minus. Yeah, well, it, it, it depends how it's calculated later on. We'll have to see. Yeah, that's fair. Um, just seems weird to say it that way but with that said the point being again is maybe you want a character with a glass jaw but what's the benefit of that he though why would i want to take a character with a glass jaw okay let me I, let me reword that that's not the way why would yeah, i want I mean, to select any type of defect because uh, if 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 your the vision of, of your character is that uh you know you have a high body stat but but that's let's say that's all strength and no endurance well, you take the defect to bring down the endurance part and up the strength part. Yeah. And I believe that that would affect your health points because I think that that's what would happen. So you would have effectively less health, but you'd be super strong. You have so to the, make trades. You're right. The, the, the point is, is that you can take those points to put elsewhere where you want them. Mm -hmm. So exactly is uh, what he was saying there. Energy points. Characters possess a personal reserve of energy that may be burned when carrying out difficult tasks. In Minnesota, Chihuahua. we call this the we call this the UFTA points. The UFTA points. Cheap power. 
<laughs> G power, there you go. Energy points are needed to fuel attributes that are associated with the deplete limiter. If your character's energy point total is ever reduced to zero, fall unconscious from exhaustion. Oh. Energy points are also used to represent deprivation such as hunger, thirst, fatigue, lack of sleep, and even intense emotions such as crippling fear or stress. So it's your emotional state to some degree. Kind stress of. is the other guy's problem. <laughs> In extreme moments, player characters can use energy points to temporarily provide a bonus to a die roll. See dramatic feats for more information. I forgot that Canadians do singular dice. Because they follow the British way of doing things. It's annoying. <laughs> Players and, G and the GM are cautioned that the overuse of energy points can slow the pace of the gamer and greatly increase the amount of bookkeeping. Now, to some people, you're not going to care. Champions players are going to be like, and? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> but remember, the tri-stat system is built to be quick. It is built to be somewhat simplistic. The die rolls are there to move the game forward. So... Well, there's a lot of similarities to this game in Champions. They do play differently, and meaningful, meaningfully so. If you're into the crunch, you'll probably prefer Champions. If you're into more quick gameplay, let's get, let's just keep it moving. It's still meaningful, but it would be more simplified than you're going to like the tri-stat system better. Uh, your character's uh, your character's base maximum number of energy points is equal to the sum of the mind stat and soul stat multiplied by five. So notice that health is body, energy is mind, and both of them utilize the soul. Increase With energy. You got to have guts. Yeah, willpower, guts. Yeah. Uh, where where? Uh, increase energy points by plus ten for every level of the character's energized attribute. Woohoo! And S. <laughs> of course. I'm not, not going to point out everything. I didn't point out the maneuver earlier. All right. Damage multiplier. Energy <laughs> <laughs> Uh Why do they say aluminum like Americans, though? It's like. They, I know, they, right? I mean, it's the, the only stuff. word I agree with the British with. Aluminium <laughs> is objectively a better pronunciation of the word. Objectively. Yep. yep. Gosh. A character's base damage multiplier is five. Is in, now, if you notice that your health stat uh, 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 is also multiplied by five. So why don't you just do it by one? Because there are things that can happen later on that can nuance it more. And we might see that when we get into attributes, limiters, and so forth. But it needs to be five for now. So a character's base damage multiplier is five is increased by plus one per level of the character's massive damage attribute. Yeah, which is a power or ability yeah. later on that you can get. Now I want to be greatly, here. Greatly uh, increase your your uh, hand to hand or throwing damage power mm -hmm. without using a ton of points. Now, either this paragraph is wrong. Or what I'm about to say is right. <laughs> what? This is the multiplier. The multiplier is increased by plus one. Yes. So if you take a massive damage attribute at level two, I guess that would be plus one for each one. So that'd be plus one yeah. plus two. So that'd be a multiplier of seven. seven. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I read it. That's the right. We'll find out later. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. That probably is how it works. But, you know, sometimes we're tricked on this stuff because the the verbiage of words. But uh, uh, anyway, that, that's how it reads to me. So that can be devastating. Also, when muscle power, uh, when muscle power weapon attacks are involved, such as for normal melee and thrown weapons with the muscle enhancement, the super strength attribute increases the damage multiplier by plus two for each attribute level. That has to be so expensive as to like feel like you're passing a kidney stone spending all those character points on it. That's got to be because my God, right now I, I I could have average strength and have a time and have a times ten multiplier and just be you know pushing around buildings and stuff. Well, that, it is know, we, it is two. Oh, what the hell? What, what was all that about? Again, character attributes. I don't know, but it, there there has that has to be super expensive to get. That has to be super expensive. Oh, uh, is this book hyperlinked? No, it isn't. 
Because I clicked on it. Why do you keep screwing up? Stop screwing up. Pro streamer. Come on. It's weird because it just, as I was clicking right here, because I wanted to highlight muscle enhancement and super strength attribute. You need two things. So That's what I said. Got to be super expensive. Yeah, well, theoretically, with two things, yeah, I mean, we can find out later when we come to attributes and enhancements, but yes. So more information on physical combat and damage, see page 175, and I don't know what week we're talking about combat, but we will get there at some point. So there you go. Th that's everything as far as uh, base and derived stats go. Next time we are going to look at character attributes. Now, this is a very, very, very long chapter, but guess what? Most of it is the actual powers Power. so hopefully uh, he and dog wrote down his character from last week <laughs> because we're going to read these two pages here and then we're going to take a look at the powers on there and then i also have a couple written down that i want to make sure we go over oops that's the wrong one uh yes there's five of them here that i want because they're completely separate from the norm that uh, we're going to take a look at as well well, it doesn't matter if I if I wrote down my character from last week or not, which I didn't. But I'm gonna be looking at I want to look at muscle enhancement and the and the the other damage multiplier one to to see how how much you could stack that for a reasonable amount of character points. Okay, to just, well, we to just break we, this game on punch and folk. That's fine. We can we can take the time to do that, but we do want to look at the at least a couple of the ones that come with the character that we looked at just to be consistent throughout the videos. Well, I so. didn't write them down. No, no, that's fine. No, we got the character template up above. You just okay. tell me what the template is and... Oh, right. I, I forget. What? <laughs> I forget. You didn't write that down? No. I didn't oh, know man. I was supposed to. Yeah, no, I thought you did last week. I thought we I, I said it. Know. Oh, Mastermind. That's right, Mastermind. Yeah. Page 41. Go. Page 41. Even better, 41. So, book page 41 or PDF page 41? We'll find out right now. Mastermind. It's uh, PDF page 43. So yeah, so we'll look at, uh, so he's got attack mastery, defense mastery, height and awareness, inspire, mind shield, skill group. So, and a couple of these I already have written down. So uh, yeah, so we can also take a look at the ones that you wanted to look at as well. Okay. Cool. Okay, but that's in the next video. So what do we have for questions, comments, concerns for this one? Uh, let's see, not a whole lot to, to do with the game. Well, no, there, there was some stuff that, oh, uh, Connor says, OCV, DCV, champions for the win. This this game is sounding more and more familiar. And you know what? Yeah, it at first blush, it is definitely uh, going on infringement territory, like like leaning toward infringement in some areas, right? Well, but, yeah, I I would actually have I would argue, and I don't mean this in a bad way, that it's champions based on the tristat system. I I mean I I don't think Mark could really argue with that either uh you know i'm not saying he stole from champions that you can't that's the thing is you can't copyright a game system just can't you can copyright certain terms uh like there are certain terms that dungeons and dragons own you can't use the beholder somewhere because they own that term uh kevin in palladium has certain things copywritten that are specifically palladium related i'd really love to know how he got eclip I don't how that passed the censors, um, but uh, <laughs> uh, but the, the, you can uh, copyright certain aspects of it, and you can copyright the presentation of it, but you can't copyright game rules. So, yeah. All right. If there's nothing else in there, I guess uh, say uh, make sure everybody likes, subscribe, and share. As we go through Silver Age Sentinel Second Edition, I mean Absolute Power, a superhero <laughs> role-playing game. Uh, I'm not big into superhero games. Games like Champions and Besom and Absolute Power, the character creation always confuses me. Uh, and it's not the simple stuff that confuses me. It's maybe we'll get into a couple of the attributes. Champions has it as well with the variable power, all that nonsense. That stuff should just be removed from the game. They're dumb. Um, <laughs> outside of that, I really I love the versatility of how you can make a character in games like Absolute Power. And I hope we kind of got that across. Yeah, there's only three stats. You're right. But all the things you can do with those three stats and all the limiters and enhancements and uh, defects and whatever the other term is that, that you can get for uh, for them to make the character you want are absolutely amazing. So hope to see you in the next video when we talk about attributes.